631, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Wally Bopkowitz. I am the Issaquah City Administrator. Uh, thank you uh, for coming uh, in something I've never done before, and that is to uh, have a, a rather large uh, community meeting um, by video. Uh, we are still uh, under uh, limitations on how we can hold public meetings, uh, given uh, the governor, governor stay at home orders. Um, we cannot really uh, begin to think about having uh, traditional public meetings under those orders until we get to uh, phase three of uh, the reopening plan. Um, and so since we're not even yet at phase two, uh, we uh, decided, the city council, the mayor decided uh, that we needed to move forward on some key issues. And to do that, uh, we're using uh, uh, video conferencing format uh, to have the meeting. So. We appreciate uh, your willingness to participate this way. I'll thank you many times this evening for joining us, but let me say thank you uh, for uh, coming together tonight uh, as we talk about what makes sense for next steps uh, for an environmental type uh, a board for the city of Issaquah. Um, let me introduce a couple of this evening from Megan Curtis Murphy. Uh, who is with our Office of Sustainability, she's a sustainability coordinator. Uh, Megan, why don't you wave for those who are, um, can pick you out of the uh, the many other faces on there. People can wave back to, to Megan. Um, she's gonna give an overview. Uh, she's done a white paper, which hopefully many of you have had a chance to look at, uh, give an overview of that, and that will sort of serve as the basis of our uh, discussions. Uh, Tisha Geezer, uh, the deputy city clerk, is also here with us, wave, hi, Tisha. Um, uh, Tisha and uh, her partner in crime, uh, the city clerk, Tini Eggers, have become quite expert at holding meetings uh, using WebEx. So thank you, Tisha, for giving up a portion of your evening tonight to help us uh, get through this. Uh, and then Gus Tawana. Uh, Gus, you're still here somewhere, but buried amongst the, uh, the tiles. Uh, Gus is with our information technology department and uh, has also been joining us just in case there's any uh, any hiccups in what we're doing. So let me uh, walk through uh, the agenda just a little bit. Um, again, Megan is going to be providing an overview. Uh, she'll talk a little bit about, um, about some process issues because this is a public meeting. We are recording it. Uh, it will be posted. It's not being broadcast live on cable television, uh, but it is um, going to be posted on YouTube. And so uh, we have a particular way that we will be asking you uh, to uh, let us know if you'd like to ask questions, uh, and Megan will get into that a little bit. Uh, then she will review um, uh, the white paper that was uh, compiled just to give you uh, some uh, information about what other communities are doing as far as environmental and sustainability boards. Um, and uh, hopefully that provides a good uh, uh, background for then four discussion questions uh, that we would like your input on. And that is, what do you envision as the primary purpose of this board? What types of topics do you want the board to address or review? Are there certain areas of expertise or professions that you want to see represented on the board? And what would success look like for this board a year after this meeting? So our intent is to um, you know, get this feedback from you, uh, come back in a couple of weeks and uh, uh, share uh, sort of a summary of what we heard, answer any additional questions and try to come up with some sort of consensus, if not consensus, at least uh, some common points uh, that we can bring back to the city council at a study session on July 14th. Uh, the hope then is that that study session, the council can review the input from these meetings, uh, give some direction as to what uh, they would like to do with an environmental uh, sustainability board moving forward. Uh, we would then come back with an ordinance uh, to create that group. Um, we would uh, solicit for individuals to serve on it. And, and then the group would start meeting. So that's sort of the, the universe of what we're trying to accomplish moving forward. Um, unless there's any initial questions, um, and we'll talk a little bit about questions uh, in a minute. Um, are there any initial questions from anyone in the, on, the, on the call? All right, uh, with that then, Megan, uh, why don't you uh, move forward with the webinar logistics and then you can move into the presentations. Great, thank you. <laughs> um, so thank you everyone for being here this evening. I'm really excited to, 
to see you all. I'm glad we have so many people on video. Um, it's unfortunate we can't be in person, but I'm glad that at least during the staying home and staying healthy, we're able to have access to technology that allows us to connect in real time. Um, so again, I'm Megan Curtis Murphy. Um, I'm with the Office of Sustainability. I've been with the city for about six years now, and I've gotten to work on a lot of exciting projects here at the city. Um, recently updated our greenhouse gas inventory earlier this year. Um, worked on a solarized campaign um, a couple of years ago to bring more solar to the city. I see a few people on the call here who, who are engaged in that effort, so great to see you. Um, I've done a lot of uh, various sustainability programs with the city. Um, prior to coming to Issaquah, I uh, was a graduate student at um, University of Washington and got my Master in Public Administration focusing on environmental policy. Um, and prior to that, I worked in the nonprofit field, um, the environmental nonprofit field. So I've been running blood through nonprofit for a long time and um, you know, really enjoy the work and excited to be here with Issaquah. Um, so it looks like we have a lot of people on the call. We had just over 50 um, uh, who RSVP'd, so I'm glad that so many people are interested and can attend this evening. Uh, so before I go ahead and um, do a short presentation, I just wanted to run through a few logistics um, for the webinar today. Uh, so whether you've called in or joined via video, um, we ask that you to remain on, on mute until you're able, until you're going to be talking. Um, so when it's time, you can unmute yourself by scrolling down to the bottom of the screen and pressing the unmute button on the left hand side. And please note that if it is red, then you are muted. And if it's black, you're on. So that might be a little bit different than some of the other platforms. Um, you'll also notice the chat button is another feature of WebEx. We're asking the participants use the chat only to indicate that you have a question or a comment. Uh, we'll call on you and you can unmute yourself and provide your question or comment. We'll also do our best to monitor the chat box and get to everyone this evening. Um, we'll be providing a follow-up survey this week in case something comes to you later or you didn't have a chance to say it in the meeting. So we really wanna get as much feedback as possible from, from this group. Um, so you're welcome to keep your video on or off during the call. Um, the video button is next to the mute button on the bottom, as you can see on the on the screen here, and that works the same as the, the mute button. Um, another thing to note is the space bar also functions as a mute unmute button. So just if you're leaning towards your computer, just be cognizant um, not to touch that because that will unmute or mute you. Um, if you've joined us by the phone this evening, um, you will not be able to unmute yourself. Instead, you'll need to um, raise your hand to talk. And to do that, you press star three, and we'll see that there's a, a hand raised and we'll get to you and, and unmute you. And you'll also need to unmute from your phone. And then when you're done talking, you can press star three to lower your hand. Um, so I think that's about it for logistics. <laughs> um, so I uh, will be going ahead and doing the presentation. Um, right after the presentation, I'll go ahead and answer any clarifying questions about it, um, and then we'll move into the discussion from there. Um, so as Wally mentioned, we're here to discuss the formation of an environmental type of board. Um, I want to provide a little bit of background information on the Rivers and Streams Board first and the great work that they've done for the city. Uh, the city has about 15 volunteer boards and commissions that advise on a variety of topics, including economic vitality, arts, human services, parks, and transportation. The River and Streams Board was formed in 1983 to serve as the advisory body on issues related to the environment. Um, although its scope has um, been fairly narrowly defined uh, regarding just technical matters on the aquatic environment in Issaquah. Um, so this is demonstrated in the purpose of the board, which you can see on the screen here, to protect, preserve, and enhance water quality in Issaquah, including fish, birds, and mammals, and advising the mayor and city councils on actions necessary to achieve this. When the board was created, Issaquah had about 5,000 people and fairly limited in staff capacity to address technical matters, especially those around um, development and specifically the aquatic environment. So Rivers and Streams filled a really important role at this time by providing technical recommendations on projects that have an impact on the aquatic environment. Some of these include um, review of city capital projects, uh, habitat restoration plans with a focus on salmon and other aquatic water life, um, water quality monitoring reports, uh, stormwater management plans. Um, our last plan was uh, update, was from 2002 and we're currently in the process of um, updating that now. 
and then also private development projects that were proposed near waterways or might have an impact on wetlands or critical areas. So in order to provide scientific and technical recommendations on these types of projects, board members as described in the city's municipal code were required to be knowledgeable in the life sciences, hydrology or geology areas as evidenced by training or experience. Since the creation of the board, there has been a lot of change in the city, region, and environmental issues in general. The city has grown from a population of 5,000 when the board was created to over 35,000 today. At the same time, there has been a lot of updates to environmental regulations and review requirements at the state, local, and national levels on various topics from wetlands, streams, restoration, and more. The issues are more complex and require greater scrutiny to ensure protection of the aquatic and other natural environments. So this increase in population and requirements, city staff has grown as well to meet the demand. The city now employs multiple planners, engineers, and scientists, as well as professional and sustainability. This is not to say that we have all the expertise in-house. The city also contracts with numerous consultants to perform peer review of projects, plans, and policies. Staff members also serve on many working bodies contributing to increased environmental protection and outcomes in our region around salmon recovery, pollution prevention, waste reduction, climate change, and many more. In addition, the residents in our city are passionate about the environment as evidence, I'd say, both by this meeting today and how many people we have involved, and also through a lot of the work that's been done in the city. Um, one of those projects was the citywide strategic plan and we have a goal area around environmental stewardship, and that had one of the highest levels of engagement as we were developing our strategic plan. And the environment is also highlighted in the city's vision, mission, and guiding principles. Along with these changes, the city itself is responsible for, planning for, and interested in a greater variety of environmental topics, as I'm sure many of you on this meeting are also interested in. Cities are often leaders on new policies and offer opportunities for innovation and immediate action on a much greater range of environmental and sustainability topics. For example, Issaquah was one of the first cities in the state to adopt a ban on single-use plastic bags. Several cities often called to uh, find out what that process was and to gain some expertise on it, and even the state has followed suit now, which will be going into effect next year. So this slide is meant to show the variety of environmental and sustainability topics the city can address. There are many other examples as well, but some here are around climate change, um, both mitigation or reducing greenhouse gas emissions and resilience or preparing for the impacts of climate. Um, sustainable materials management, which is reducing waste and using our resources um, uh, sustainably, uh, composting and recycling. Uh, stormwater management, including both the impacts of climate and its effect on water quality, uh, fish and wildlife protection, uh, trees, forests, and land management, and renewable energy and energy efficiency, um, as well as the source of where energy is coming from, whether it's coal, gas, or renewable. Um, and some even more environment and sustainability topics, um, so sustainable development and green building, um, equity and environment, a topic um, which has always been really important in the city, but as even more urgency. Um, urban agriculture, water conservation, sustainable transportation, or focusing on reducing the drive alone rate and promoting alternative modes, and protecting our streams, lakes, and wetlands. So quite the variety, and this doesn't even capture all of them. Can I ask a question? Sure. So go ba going back to that last uh, slide, mm -hmm. what does equity and environment mean? I think it can it can take on a lot of different meanings, um, but we want to make sure that all of populations in the city um, have access to you know the the best environment they have. Um, so this could take the form in um, some programs, um, for example, as it relates to climate. Um, some people who are most vulnerable to uh, the impacts of climate may not have the resources to deal with it. Um, so being cognizant of that in our program planning, uh, making sure that we provide um, you know, programs and access to um, the best environmental outcomes for everyone. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so this next slide shows a small sample of communities with some sort of environmental or sustainably focused board. 
Uh, the River and Streams Board is included in the table and highlighted in gray. And this table is also in the white paper that was sent out prior to the meeting. Uh, the first two columns show the board name and city. The star means that the city has multiple boards um, on different environmental topics. For example, Cambridge, Massachusetts, which is listed here, also has a conservation committee, a recycling advisory committee, and a bicycle committee. Uh, the green columns show the board role, ranging from advisory to more hands-on types of activities. And the yellow columns show the scope or types of topics uh, that the board addresses. And although all are environmental, uh, the first few are a bit more focused on climate and sustainability, and the latter are more around the natural environment. I think there can be a place for both topics on, on a board. However, you'll note that uh, most do not cover all of the topics, um, and there's also a lot of subtopics under these that aren't represented, so a lot of, a lot of variety. Um, so this table is really only meant to be representative of the types of activities out there. Um, a couple more things to note about it. Um, there were a few examples I found on more technically focused boards. Um, so the Bainbridge example here shows they have a technical board. Um, they also have a, a climate board um, as well. And then several cities, including Berkeley, Boulder, Cambridge, and Fort Collins, are mostly advisory boards on several environmental and sustainability topics. Um, Tacoma, one of our closer cities, is similar, um, but also does some grant administration and oversight of an environmental plan. And I will come back to the Tacoma Commission shortly. Um, in general, the boards that cover a wider scope are more advisory and less hands-on because uh, there's so many topics to cover that it's harder to get the in-depth expertise needed for um, more technical oriented work. Most of the boards reviewed did not focus on land management or the, the overall use or development of land. Um, and although some may receive updates on those topics, they seem to be more frequently covered by uh, a park or, or conservation board or commission in the city. Another thing to note here is that you don't see a lot of our neighboring communities listed on the board. Um, uh, Bellevue has an environmental services board, but this is mainly addresses utility programs, including water, stormwater, and garbage. Uh, many of our neighboring communities, including Kirkland and Redmond, address climate and some other environmental policies through their planning commissions. Um, so I'm excited we're having this conversation today about the, the creation of an environmental type of board. Um, and I think it's somewhat unique in our region right now. So that's exciting. Um, and the white paper includes longer descriptions on, on each of these topics as well. Um, so the, to further elaborate on, on the types of things that can be covered, um, I've included a sample list of topics that the Sustainable Tacoma Commission addressed last year. So as you can see, the list includes a variety of sustainability and climate related topics on recycling, natural gas, electric vehicles, and a climate change emergency resolution. The commission also reviews plans and programs, including the Shoreline Master Program, Urban Forestry Program, and Tide Flat Subarea Plan. The commission does not specifically review development projects, but rather provides a higher level feedback on land use and other policies and plans to ensure that both public and private projects meet these standards. There are also some more logistical items that are covered on the agendas for these boards, including grant administration, uh, public comment period, staff updates, and planning for future meetings and events. So with that, I would now like to um, open up first to just see if there's any um, questions about the presentation itself, and then we'll be able to get into the discussion questions after that. Um, so you can use the, the chat box to um, ask any questions. Well, or, or more specifically, just let us know you have a question. Again, uh, we, we don't use the chat box for chatting because these are public meetings and the, uh, the, the video is the record of the meeting and we have no way to incorporate the chat with that video. So uh, if you have a question, if you could uh, do what Council Member Goodman just did and write the word question, uh, that would be great. So Council Member Goodman, why don't you start with our first question? Uh, great, thank you. Um, what an exciting meeting. And um, uh, I hope this isn't an obviously dumb question, but I guess that also shows that we should all feel free <laughs> to ask questions because no questions are dumb. Um, so I didn't see um, the presentation materials beforehand, and but I also um, uh, did not uh, sign up until the last minute. So if the presentation materials were not sent out beforehand, or for those people who didn't get them 
the presentation and materials. Can we um, get them? Uh, yes. Sure, and, and, and we and we we made them available to everyone who signed up. Great. So, I didn't get access till right before. So thank you. Other general questions before we go into the four that we listed on the agenda. We make sure no one's raising their hand. I don't see Tisha. Do I do you see anyone raising their hand? No. All right. Well, we put together four questions uh, to try to uh, get some uh, some dialogue going. Um, the first of those questions is, what do you envision as the primary purpose of the board? Uh, as I think we detailed in the white paper, uh, different communities have different focus. Um, some. Uh, choose to be focused on every imaginable environmental issue. Some have subsets of that. Um, you know, one of our concerns and one of the reasons the mayor and city council asked that we uh, have these discussions is that the rivers and streams group has not met regularly. Um, I think there are some who felt that the uh, uh, outline of uh, their responsibilities was too narrow, uh, so there wasn't a regular meeting. Um, and I think there's a great desire to have a regular meeting environmental board in Issaquah. So if that is the case, uh, what should its portfolio of issues be uh, to work on moving forward? Any comments? If you have a comment, put the word comment in the chat box. Well, I have a comment, but because I can't find my chat box because it says unchat it doesn't say chat i this is connie marsh so i suppose my comment is i tried to comment before and i couldn't comment okay go ahead connie okay so prior um i i was a little concerned when i saw all of the the things in the list um it did not echo any of the roles of the river and streams board which uh were much more hands-on and less planning oriented and at this point in time i i don't feel like there is um anyone who is actually reviewing the city in a large way to ensure that we are even adhering to our our codes and what we're supposed to be doing so uh why why was the decision made to sort of leave that more localized um project oriented board off of the lists you know because that's that's been the current use if that if the group feels that needs to continue fine uh the feedback that we've gotten from many community members is that its portfolio needs to be larger so that doesn't need necessarily mean that it excludes what has been done in the past, but may have things added to it. And one of the purposes for the, these meetings is to, to sort through that. So Connie, if you feel that you're, I think what I hear you saying is uh, the, the existing portfolio of rivers and streams should be maintained by whatever group uh, succeeds it. Is that a fair summary? Well, yes, but that wasn't a question. That was an opinion. So I tried to phrase it as a question. So. So, That's okay. Yes. All right. Uh, the next question comes from David. I don't know how many Davids we have on the line, but whoever, <laughs> whichever David wanted to ask a question, why don't you unmute and, and, ask, and uh, uh, answer the question as far as the, the primary purpose of the, of the group? Yeah, that was me, uh, David Dunphy here. Uh, my question is, um, about other committees that currently exist in the city, and if you could take a minute to describe which ones might interface with it. In the slide deck, it talked about how other cities have um, other committees or commissions that might interface. Um, so I know we have like the planning commission, but like what other committees does the city currently have that would have a scope that might butt up against uh, this committee or they would have to collaborate with? That's an excellent question, um, and I thought I saw on the line Jeff Watling, our director of recreation and community services. Jeff, are you on the line? Uh, 
Yes, I am, Wally. Sorry for the delay. <laughs> yeah, no problem, Jeff. Uh, you heard the question about other commissions that this group might, uh, uh, I'm not sure what the term was, or but certainly be, be coordinated with. Why don't you talk about the current role of the Recreation Commission? Because there are certainly some environmental stewardship issues that the Recreation Commission currently has. Yeah, by name, the Park Board, uh, Executive Wally, um, probably takes on more of a role as a, as a land manager. Uh, so, you know, that board would certainly have an, have an interface with um, uh, what this group would look like. Uh, we've certainly already begun having some of those conversations with Megan right now. Um, you know, the, the city as uh, the land steward and land manager of your public land, your you know 1,500 acres of, of public land, um, that board oversees and, and really serves as a steering committee for uh, capital projects, um, um, our, a lot of our capital planning, um, our prioritization. Uh, we updated a park strategic plan in 2018. The park board served as a steering committee for that group. So um, great opportunities for interface uh, in terms of um, the natural resources and, and park land that, um, uh, that we manage. So Jeff, uh, j just to kind of follow up on the question. So in addition to the to the uh, uh, planning bodies, the, the planning policy committee and the development commission, uh, in our initial discussions, really the environment, uh, the uh, the parks board is the only other one that would interface that we that we believe has any kind of overlap. Is that correct? Yeah, in a in a direct way, yeah. Okay, and are, were there any others? I don't think, and Megan, I don't know that there were any others from an indirect, mm -hmm. or with the mobility master plan, the, the, the transportation advisory committee, perhaps another mm -hmm. indirect? Um, I would say, I, I think that that could definitely interact some um, when it gets to sustainable transportation and, um, and climate related initiatives with the um, transportation advisory board. Um, another one that I've talked with some is the development commission. Um, I think that there's, you know, interest in several of the, the topics. So I think there could be, um, you know, some uh, informing of, of, of ideas. Um, but overall, it has a separate body. Um, Planning Policy Commission, I think, might be some interest on some of the topics there. Um, so we're starting to have these conversations with all of those different boards. Great. David, did that answer your question? Yeah, I guess the two follow-up I would have is, like, is there any board looking at uh, energy in the city currently? Does that live in any of the boards? Um, or outreach and education seems like another component that was kind of outlined in that presentation. Does that live in any boards? Is that on the park commission or anything else at this time? Um, Go ahead, Megan. Uh, overall, um, not really. I think that that could be a, a great thing for a new type of environmental board. Um, we have had some you know, climate policies before that have gone directly to council, um, but I think having some review of, of energy related things or various outreach and education programs related to the environment could be something that could go before this type of board. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next question is uh, from Larry F. Hi, Wally. Um, I wanted to start by actually answering the uh, the question of uh, the primary purpose. I would see it as applying science and data to any decisions made by the city of Issaquah that impact the quality of the environment, including air, water, vegetation, open spaces, and wildlife. Um, second item is that the rivers and streams um, mission was, um, in my view, a good start. Um, if you add air quality and light issues to it. My third observation is that the Rivers and Streams Board um, lacked the ability to, um, didn't have teeth, lacked the ability to make things happen. And it, this new board would need to um, interface very closely with the existing authorities. So perhaps this board would have a seat on each of the other boards, planning commission, et cetera, that make decisions in this space so that the recommendations um, have a good chance of actually being carried out. Great. Thank you, Larry, for your comment. Um, the next uh, comment comes from Laura, MacBook Air. Yeah, 
Yes, now you know I'm on a MacBook. Hi. <laughs> um, I, uh, part of my question was answered, but I was a little unclear about how this fits in with the other, uh, you know, initiatives going on, specifically um, existing, like, reports and audits. It sounds like there's been some general research. But Lara, we, we're having trouble hearing you. Oh, well. There I you can... go. <laughs> okay. Um, do you have existing research and initiatives that have been identified and flagged as priorities overall? Or is that like something that needs to be happening? You know, I think part of that would be uh, as we're looking at portfolio for a, a new group that that would be part of their mission would be to, to put the, forward a work plan to the mayor and city council uh, for review. Uh, as Megan mentioned, there is an environmental stewardship a section to the city strategic plan. And so there are some strategic objectives uh, under the environmental stewardship portion. Um, again, I think part of the discussion is to try to uh, get a better sense of what that portfolio would be. There is no predetermined portfolio, just that general sense in the community that we should have a more active environmental board. That's that's kind of what we're going on and okay. trying to trying to define that a little bit more. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. So uh, just to finish up my other thought that I had on there, so you don't have to call on me twice. Um, I think that what's interesting to me and what brings me to want to participate is that I think that Issaquah is uniquely positioned. Can you hear me? Okay. By the way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uniquely positioned to be sort of a leader in this Issaquah Alps idea of doing conservation trade and some other um, stormwater management and, you know, native vegetation. It seems like we're just positioned to be able to to pivot and position ourselves to be very sustainable and progressive in a way that I think more established communities who are already fully developed aren't as flexible in. So I think it'd be neat to see us um, shift that direction. Great. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Ann Newcomb put a comment in the box. I feel climate change is the most important topic. Ann, did you want to elaborate? No, I'm good. All right, I'm thank you. Distant. Thank you. Uh, next is from Kaya Hartman. Oh, hers is for the next group of topics. Okay, so Kaya, make sure I come back to you first on the next group of topics. Um, Lara, um, I think you said you had uh, talked about what you wanted to talk about. Is that correct? All right. Uh, Jay Wood, comment, question? Uh, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you great. Okay. I am the uh, commissioner of the current rivers and streams board. And I just want to, a couple of things I want to address here. Number one, I want to thank everybody who has been on this board for the last just 10, 15, 20 years, including Lee. I know she's on here and Janet's on here. Um, just amazing people. But I really think we want to expand our, our, uh, ability to improve what's going on here in Issaquah and, and we really care about this place. And so um, I hope that as we move forward that we can really do some positive changes. This, this board needs to have some teeth. I think somebody said that before. Um, I, I, I like what Connie said was talking about just having some importance. And so I hope that as we move forward that this board becomes a powerful and important voice in the community. And so let's go get it. Let's make this board matter. Great, thank you very much for your comment. Uh, the next is from Tyla, T-H-A-L-I-A. I hope I pronounced that correctly. And hi, this is Megan. I just wanted to chime in that you may have noticed I'll be sharing my screen um, and capturing all the all the notes that you're seeing today and going back and forth between the notes and, and videos so we can see everyone. So just wanted to let you know. Um, sorry, go ahead, Talia. Um, this is Driti. Thalia is reconnecting actually, but she asked me to ask her questions. Can you guys hear me? Very great. Uh, so we are both high schoolers from Issaquah High School, part of our own green team club, and we were wondering what the overall tangible influences this board would have in Issaquah, and would it be through the mayor, through legislation and advocacy, and what input is the community going to have in this board? 
Well, I, I think that's a, a major part of what we're talking about. I think as people have talked about it having teeth, um, all of our boards are advisory boards. And so uh, advisory boards uh, make recommendations to the mayor and city council who are then uh, to act on them. So I think one of our challenges um, in trying to come up with something that has teeth in that environment uh, is probably to be as specific as we can about what the portfolio of responsibilities are. Um, well, you know, again, like we're here tonight because the mayor and city council feel that there needs to be a stronger voice, that there needs to be a regular um, citizen group that is considering these issues and providing recommendations to them. So um, certainly the council and the mayor want uh, this kind of feedback. I think our challenge now is just to figure out uh, the best way to involve the community, uh, the, the best way to come up with a list of uh, responsible topics and then to, to act on them. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Well, like, can I can I interchange with that or exchange with sure. that? Go ahead. So, I think it's really important that we have the voice of the the youth, the people that are going to make the changes in this community. And mm -hmm. any way that we can work with people uh, such as yourselves who are care about the community, care about the environment. Uh, have a voice and are going to have the power to make change. Uh, I would really, really, really like to see your voice on our committee. Great. Thank you. Uh, the Thank next you. question is from committed Steve. There, I think I'm successfully unmuted. Can you hear me okay? I hear you great. Just speak up just a little bit. So uh, a couple of thoughts. The first was uh, one of the groups that this version of Streams Body touches on is the Development Commission. Uh, and I use the example of the Bruce and Evergreen. Steve, Steve, we're having a little trouble hearing it. Can you speak up just a little so bit? One of the groups that this group interfaces with was also the Development Commission, which was recently involved in the Evergreen Board uh, lot extension. So that's another example of a board that we touch base with. and. Uh, with that in mind, I would also like to know I, not all of the groups are advisory. Some of them are also uh, decision making bodies, such as the Development Commission. And can or should this group also follow that same model? I'm not necessarily advocating for that, but I think it's a relevant question uh, whether it should have more teeth than just be advisory or not. So I'd like to see that issue considered. Okay. Part of the Development Commission. So uh, would there is. Just Steve, I just want to catch that point. So, uh, sh should the city council then consider that this group would have final determination on certain matters? Is that I, what you're I think suggesting? That question should be. I think that question should be asked and considered. I'm not advocating for that, but I think maybe part of having teeth is asking that question. Okay. But part of that role is also, I think, uh, the ability of the rivers and stream boards to advise on issues is limited as far as their scope of looking at just city code should they be able to or empowered to consider things like uh, environmental impact statements or uh, a broader scope than just city code in making a determination that will also okay. be an example of something that would be more key uh, again not necessarily advocating for something or, or not for something but i think there's a relevant question that i think this body should be empowered to look at and consider Great. That's Thank my you. first issue. The second issue is uh, what are the roles that this body should take on? I think part of that is, as we've said, is advisory, uh, giving feedback to the city and the mayor. The second is also advocacy for different projects, both before the city council and the mayor, but also in the larger scope of the community that we're a part of, whether that's environmental issues, whether that's energy issues, whether that's uh, greenhouse gas, global warming, whether that's uh, how would that get paid? The second is, or third, I guess, is is the teeth piece of this in that how do we engage or enforce or make those mechanisms happen? Uh, I think an example might, another example might be is uh, when the issue of Providence Point was looked at for the chapel, for the chapel relocation. The city is not currently considered whether or not environmental factors are a part of that decision making process and whether or not 
environmental issues should be something we have the ability to, to influence or advocate for uh, changing city code to include such considerations. I think I'll conclude my comments at this point to give folks a chance to see if I've indicated that and whether that's been properly understood. Great. Hi, this is Megan. Right. I just wanted to add a reminder to please um, let us know your name before speaking, just so we are able to monitor that. Thank you. Steve is Steve, uh, P E R E I R A. Um, I believe next is Susan Neville. Hello. Um, this is thank you for organizing this. Thank you for um, giving us the ability to give comments and uh, developing this important. Um, uh, anyway, I I think what I started with is that there's so many topics that are so important to Issaquah. It was really hard to narrow it down. So um, what I think is really important is before we establish the focus, once this focus is established is to find sustainability and climate change and what it means to this board and the people that are interacting with it. Because there's many meanings today of what that means. I think in the year 2020, everyone views it a little bit differently. So that's an important establishment point. And the other one is, um, I see that the park system does large open space areas, but I don't see where the um, oversight or transparency would come in for new development for private and public areas that um, enroach on environmental issues. And, and I know we've said that in the past, a couple other people have mentioned it, but I think that there's a, a real need for that within a committee. And I don't know if it's this committee or we can't let that slip away from us because I don't see another area uh, today that's covering that issue. And that was my comment. Great, thank you very much. Um, next is uh, Patricia Bloor. Um, I would. Okay, I was just trying to say, okay, I'm I'm echoing it. Can you hear me okay now? I can hear you. Okay, good. I just wanted to say I was really glad to see that the Green Club from the high school was here. So thank you. All right. Those of you that came. Great. Um there is a comment from owner that says climate change is real and so we must make changes in policy which leads us in the right direction. This involves not only policy but education. Our daily habits do make a difference. Uh, so whoever owner is, I see you um, uh, with the great beard there. Uh, do you do you wanna add to those comments, sir? And maybe state, state your name for the group and take yourself off mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, this is great. My name is Phil Bruiser. I live in downtown Issaquah. I have been a professional meteorologist all of my life. Um, climate change is something that has crept up on us slowly but surely. And it seems to me that um, initially, and I must congratulate the city on making their decision to uh, try to er eradicate plastic bags. Um, but it seems to me that we must move further than this. Um, right now, we are living in a world where uh, a lot of people are being displaced because of, of climate change. And um, if we can adopt policy within the city that helps us to reduce our consumption, uh, not only at the grocery market, but also at the gas tank, at the gas pumps. Um, these things are going to be assisting us in the future. I'd like to be part of that process of bring, bringing realistic 
change to our city uh, beyond what we've already done. And that's all I've got. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, next, William has a comment. William, if you could uh, identify yourself uh, and share whatever your thoughts are. <laughs> are you there, William? All right, uh, next is a comment from uh, Rishi Hazra. Should I say yes, that hello. I'm Rishi, that's correct, you said it correctly. And I'm a student at Skyline High School. And it was mentioned earlier that the board is looking forward to interactions with the youth, as the youth is the future generation in which more policies will be adopted. I was curious in what kind of interactions would be made and what ex to what extent does the this board have on policy and legislature that's passed in the Issaquah city? So two questions. I think the, the first one, uh, what do you think? There, there, is no, there is no set role. What do you think would be the appropriate youth role? What I think and what I would like to happen is that there is continuous and consistent youth presence in the board. And there is there is a connection between the district and this board so that policies adopted by the board into Issaquah legislature can also take place in the Issaquah school district. And I also believe that certain there are certain organizations, youth led organizations around our city, such as the sustainability ambassadors program, which I'm part of. If we can establish communications between this board and those organizations, I think we'll be able to further change more effectively. Great, thank you. And then the, the answer to your second question is another thing we're trying to sort through. Um, many of our boards and commissions are advisory uh, to the mayor and city council. A few, um, as has been mentioned this evening, have specific statutory authority where they are the final decision makers. Uh, and so it, it seems like we're hearing from members uh, tonight this idea of teeth uh, that perhaps this board should have as it's contemplated some uh, either final decision making on topics or, excuse me, some special status that would give it some teeth. So, but that's a, a part of what we're trying to just decide. Did those answer Thank your you. questions? Yes, it does. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, next is uh, David K has a comment. David, you need to unmute. Okay, um, go. we got, um, it's been a, a lot of um, good good people here tonight uh, speaking to things. And um, a lot of the people I recognize are involved in different uh, groups in the city, Issaquah Environmental Council, Issaquah Ops Trails Club, People for Climate Action. Um, so it would be nice if those groups uh, could be listed somewhere so that people on this call and, and other people at least have a, a contact to connect with those other those other groups and um, if they chose to and uh, that would be helpful I, I would like to see this uh, group have a, a teeth I'll, I think that's a, a fair word um, that doesn't mean that they are the final um, final word and it does get complicated with quasi judicial issues and some of these things especially on some of the uh, pro the development proposals going through the city but certainly this group should have a strong advisory role. Um, the park department's got three big plans going on and they're working on, and you know, they, they're they heavy on process, our park and recreation and that kind of thing, but I think they would benefit from some of, um, of the expertise, the scientific expertise um, that uh, this group could provide. Right now, a lot of us are involved with um, commenting on the King County Comprehensive Plan, which is going through a, a major update. Um, the role for this group to uh, provide input on the Comprehensive Plan for the city would be, um, I think, uh, very helpful. And um, also, um, just formalizing, I guess, the opportunity to interface with other boards and commissions 
and even the, the city council. Thank you. Great, thank you, David. Uh, Taya, uh, uh, looks like you're back. Do, do you have a, a comment or a question? Okay, did that work? We can hear you. Okay, um, so I'm from the Issaquah High School Green Team and I just kind of had a question. So you said that the, um, that your board has contact with the mayor, although I kind of just was wondering what can the mayor exactly do to make uh, tangible and actual change instead of like just talking about it? Like what does the mayor and your board have authority to make direct changes? And are those changes applicable and able to be shared and spread further than Issaquah? So like to make recommendations to other cities and even like through legislation and stuff like that. So the, the mayor of uh, uh, Issaquah is the city's chief executive. So she has the ability uh, to direct staff, um, uh, mm -hmm. take leadership on initiatives. Uh, so she has that power within uh, the city of Issaquah. She has the ability to bring initiatives uh, to the city council for their consideration and approval. Uh, the city does uh, work regionally uh, with other cities, with other counties, with the state, uh, with the federal government in some instances on issues. Uh, so if this board decided that there were uh, regional, uh, state, national topics that it wanted to see the mayor become involved in as an advocate, uh, the city council will be involved in as an advocate, um, that's certainly something uh, that a uh, role for this board. So does that answer your question? I Yes, but I just have one quick follow up question. So, would that mean that this board would be able to have influence over larger companies that would only be able to be directly influenced through national levels? Not, not directly. No. Um, again, the, the the city is active mm -hmm. in in advocacy um, mm -hmm. at the state level, at the federal level. So, if there were uh, uh, bills before the Washington State Legislature or the Congress. Um, certainly, uh, we could advocate on behalf of those bills. We belong to organizations of cities, uh, both here in Washington State as well as in the, uh, the national government. So those organizations also advocate on our behalf. So, and we regularly do um, uh, issues mm -hmm. of uh, climate change have been things that uh, those national and state associations have advocated for. So if the board felt that there was a, an initiative that was uh, in Olympia or in Washington, D.C. that needed uh, the city of Isquah's uh, voice heard, uh, this board could recommend to the mayor and council that they, they take it a position. Okay, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Great, thank you. Um, caller 425-802 has a question or a comment. Hi, Wally, thank you. Um, my name is Dave Osmer, O-S-M-E-R, and I'm on your list there somewhere as William. I couldn't get unmuted when you called on me before. Okay. Um, I just want to second uh, Mr. Wood's comments and go a step beyond what Steve was saying. Back in the 70s, I lived in Issaquah, and I actually chaired what was then called the Design Commission. It looks like that uh, authority has been uh, taken over by the Development Commission today. But we actually had review authority over uh, commercial uh, uh, development uh, applications and could give a thumbs up or a thumbs down on those, uh, whether or not they complied with the city's design ordinance. And so I'm gonna advocate that this commission have some sort of authority uh, to be able to say thumbs up or thumbs down on um, certain issues that come before it with regard to the impacts on the environment. So that's my comment. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you for your for your comment. Uh, Kaya Hartman has a question or comment, and she's on the phone. Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Thank you. Yes, um, I actually, this is the previous one I had posted on and I realized I should have done it on this instead of waiting until the next topic. But one thing I haven't heard very much about, and maybe this is not the role of the board or will not be the role of the board, 
but is community outreach and education because I think the majority of people on this call are already committed to the environment and we're doing everything we can um, by doing our part. But I think a lot of people in the community don't do some things that they could do just because they don't know that they can do them, such as um, buying in bulk and going to the grocery store right now and instead of accepting the plastic or paper bags, just putting things in the cart, taking them to the car trunk and putting them in the car trunk in their own personal bags instead of um, wasting. That's just an example of things that people don't think about. And if we could have some sort of a piece of the committee that would go out and maybe set up tables or do things like that to educate the community in a very friendly way. Um, yes, legislation is important and yes, we need to have some teeth, but at the same time, we also need to educate people that just plain are um, just ignorant of what to do. So um, how would the board work in that regard? And if, if that is not possible, how else could we uh, do some education in a nice and friendly way? Well, well, thanks for your comments. Certainly it could be within the, the scope of the board. Uh, we have staff um, that that does uh, do community outreach uh, on, on certain issues. Megan, I don't know if you want to talk uh, just sort of generally about the, the kinds of things that uh, advocacy work that staff has done working with the community over the last few years. Sure. Um, yeah, there's been a lot done in terms of um, waste reduction, recycling, composting, outreach um, with residents and also commercial businesses. Um, the, the focus there has been on multifamily and commercial because our single family diversion rate is actually pretty high, um, but there's more that we can do in, in all sectors, but particularly those. Um, we've also done a lot through um, our salmon friendly trips program on promoting alternative modes of transportation. Um, so again, we've done some some door to door outreach there. Um, we've uh, been at farmers markets and um, other community events to to let people know about their options for getting around. Um, and then also with our Solarize campaign, uh, we held we hosted um, several workshops so people could learn more about um, getting access to solar in their roof. So. Those are just a few examples, um, but I agree um, uh, informing some of those those programs could be a role of this board. If I may uh, follow up with also, can you hear me by the way? Sure. Yes. yes, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, also the businesses. Uh, I went to QFC uh, maybe a couple of days ago and I needed to throw in a piece of paper and I asked where's your recycling and they plain say we don't recycle. <laughs> so if maybe we need to do some education also to the businesses because they also have a big impact with the amount of trash and 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 waste that they have. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Stacy Vin McKinstry has a long comment. Um, Stacy, if you are able to make the comment, uh, please uh, unmute uh, or Tish. I don't know if you've been communicating with her to unmute her. Uh, if not, I'll read it for the group. It appears that Stacy wants to stay muted. Okay. Well, um, she's having uh, some fun at home this evening with her children. And so uh, what she wanted to say is, while I think it is beneficial to develop a list of priorities for this board, I do think we want to have some flexibility in order for the board to tackle new and emerging issues. In addition, we will need the board uh, to have energy on topics they want to address. I sat on the Eugene Sustainability Commission and we had a list of priorities to work from, but we did take on the items where there was commission interest in energy to move forward. We were a very active commission, not just advisory. My question to staff is where do you think there are gaps in your work? Where do you need some additional advisory support or where are there gaps in work you want to get done in the community uh, but don't have the capacity? Uh, well, that's a really interesting uh, comment. So thank you for the comment uh, as far as the question at the end. Um, I, I think we're looking uh, for the community to help narrow uh, the list. Um, there's a lot of uh, important environmental uh, initiatives out there. Um, we certainly are trying to cover the bases that we can uh, we, we have to balance uh, what resources we have for uh, policy advocacy 
uh, on sustainability, climate change, environmental stewardship issues. Um, we don't have a large staff to do that. And so, um, you know, I, th I think we're looking to uh, perhaps have one board like this be the place uh, versus multiple boards. Um, and so we can focus our energy uh, there. Uh, Megan, I don't know if there's any one or two topics that go beyond that in your mind, but go ahead and chime in if you'd like. Sure. Um, yeah, I think that we have a lot of interest in in all the topics around um, some of the ones I described tonight um, around climate and um, and energy. And we haven't we haven't had a chance to interact with the community as much on some of those. So I think having some of that expertise, um, I guess one area um, that we want to do a little bit more work on. We've done a lot around climate mitigation, but we haven't done as much on resilience or preparing for the impacts of climate. Um, so I guess that's something that comes to mind that um, it would be great to look into a little bit more for the city. All right, thanks, Megan. Uh, Lee Bangs had a comment uh, regarding, it says, example plastic bag ban and compostable Issaquah bags. Uh, Lee, do you want to uh, elaborate on that? That was, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, that was from a while back when you were saying that Issaquah interacted at the state level. There were some examples of some projects that went in right. out into the greater area. Anything else you'd like to add? Um, I'm, a priority for me would be working on climate change and uh, energy, alternative energy. Great, thank you. Uh, Ataya has another question, suggestion. Okay, um, so I kind of had a question on if this would be possible to make businesses, if applicable, um, have labeled recycling and compost for regular products as well as their own specific products and if so is there a way to have that enforced because i know places like particular restaurants don't even have it like labeled about their own particular products and manufacturing so it's very unclear where to put it which might actually have a significant impact on waste reduction sure um you know certainly within the city of issaquah the, the city could pass laws um, regarding that, um, I don't mm -hmm. believe there are any preemptions under Washington state law. Megan, I don't know if you have any uh, knowledge about this or not. Um, not, not exactly. Um, but I think we have, um, tried to work with some businesses through our, um, so through some restaurants mm -hmm. specifically through our outreach, um, with Recology, our solid waste contract in particular, even, um, offering to do some signage of, ta of items that they have in there. Um, restaurants and posting that so it makes it a little bit more clear where it can go. Um, but I think there's there's definitely more um, outreach we could do on that as well. Right. Mm -hmm. We've got one other comment. Um, Pen oh, I'm sorry, sorry, go ahead. Do you have a follow up? Yes, I just have one quick follow up. Is there any way to like regulate that? Because I, I can understand how that would be difficult to enforce a thing like that, especially with the variety of businesses. Uh, you know, it's really a, a matter of staff resources, you know, to have someone uh, from the city then go into these businesses on a regular basis and know that they're complying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we, we don't currently mm -hmm. have uh, those kind of resources to do that on a, a regular consistent basis. Uh, but again, if that was a priority for the community, uh, that could be something that the council could consider as far as, you know, mm -hmm. with other with other budget uh, issues as we move forward. So there's one other question um, from Jen S. So why don't we take that and then let's move on. We've got about 25 minutes left. I think we're covering uh, bits and pieces of some of the other questions too, but I wanna make sure uh, that we at least have an opportunity to get to as much of this as possible uh, by the eight o'clock time. So uh, Jen S, do you have a, a comment or a question? You bet, can you hear me? Great. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you, sorry. Yeah, my name is Jen Sorowit, and I agree with a number of things that have been said, specifically um, with regards to the gap analysis that I've heard a number of times, and I think Stacy said it most recently. Um, 
you know, where is the capacity needed? How can we supplement the city expertise? And so I think the question, if I can rephrase from what Stacy said is, we need you to tell us what expertise you've already got so that we can, we can start to help fill in those gaps. Um, and I would turn to some of the uh, boards that have already been in place for quite some time and the expertise that are on those boards as well, they, they should be able to help um, put that, that grid together. Um, I also think that it would be beneficial to sort of take approach this from a skill set uh, versus uh, like a, a from the ground up versus top down. So when I look at the membership of these boards that um, we're comparing here, Tacoma and Bainbridge and et cetera, there is a whole slew of expertise um, that these people have made a priority. And so I would consider us to think I would. I would advise that we look at it from, from that uh, perspective when we think about what, what do we want out of this. So what expertise do we want at the table? What skill sets do we want at the table? Um, and that, should, that might help uh, in the creation of the, of the board itself. So again, that would stem from the gap analysis to the skill sets and the expertise that you want. Um, and then the only other thing I would say is that it is absolutely critical that those people at the table um, with those skill sets that you're looking for are diverse and representative of your entire community, um, ethnicity-wise uh, and, and otherwise. Um, and I also agree with Larry about uh, combining or tying um, the work of this uh, board to existing bodies that have authority. Um, whether or not this particular one has has the authority itself. Um, yeah, and then the people that are on this board should be ambassadors. They should be helping with the outreach. They should be at those events um, just as if they were sitting on a board for a nonprofit, right? They, they, they should be ad ad ambassadors about what the city's doing um, and what they're helping helping to, to make happen. Um, so sort of a terrible amalgamation of a number of things that people have said uh, perhaps looking at it from a little bit of a different perspective. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Uh, a couple of other comments from Larry F. Uh, the theme keeps coming up, teeth or authority or ability to declare, thumbs up, thumbs down. We need to tie that to existing bodies with authority. Aileen, A-L-I-N-E, says, I agree with Kaya, it would be great to reinforce education aspect about green living <laughs> and recycling. I'm from Issaquah Highlands writer contributor for the Connections newspaper section, Living Green, the Highlands are very involved and we're ready to support the city in terms of sustainability. So we've got about 20 minutes left. Uh, I wanna open up the other uh, question two and three. Question two, what types of topics do you want the board to address and review? I think we're well into that. Um, we're also have been starting to talk about question three, are there certain areas or of expertise or professions that you wanna see represented on the board? So if you have comments on any of those questions, uh, we'll try to spend the next 10 minutes uh, talking about question one, two, three, uh, and then I'd like to leave the last 10 minutes or so uh, for the final question, which is what su would success look like for the board a year after its meeting? Uh, so with that, um, Council Member Stacey Goodman has a comment. Thanks. Um, so uh, before I jump, uh, before we jump into the next one, I just wanted to wrap up on one thing that I heard several times, and that is uh, outreach and education on several topics. And um, the last um, commenter mentioned the word ambassadors, and I wanted to comment that I was thinking about. It sounds like we might have an appetite for sort of an environmental ambassadors program. The city is short on staff and resources. And we have a lot of folks in the community that are really passionate about the environment and really passionate about volunteering and always looking for uh, people are always asking me, how do they volunteer? So potentially, um, rather than having these board members be out doing, it's already a lot, a lot of work being on a board. Perhaps there's a different um, resource we can tap with volunteers who may want to um, be part of a environmental ambassadors program. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Councilmember. Uh, David has a comment. Yeah, I wanted to had two pieces. Uh, one was to kind of highlight what Jen was saying about uh, ensuring uh, diversity of thoughts on the board and that kind of the use of 
specific job titles or holding positions for key stakeholders will be kind of an important uh, structural piece to keep voices on the board uh, as it evolves over time. Uh, one example of that, we, we have some awesome youth voices on tonight. Um, like if the board structured itself so that there was one high schooler from each of the high schools, it would kind of have a forcing mechanism to make sure that you always had those voices on the board. Um, same structure could be in place around the business community or around the different neighborhoods around Issaquah. Uh, but I think that would be a key structural piece to kind of keep the voice and the balance of the board. Great, thank you. Um, Councilmember Goodman, did you you make your, your second comment already? I think she did. Yes, I did, thank you. Great, uh, Larry F. Um, on the areas of expertise necessary, there's the obvious ones from a science standpoint, biology, ecology, et cetera. But I wanted to add two other dimensions. One of them is a business dimension. We're going to be suggesting we, <laughs> I'm making an assumption there that this is gonna happen and have authority, but um, uh, we're going to be committing resources. We're going to be making suggestions that are going to um, uh, cost money at some point or increase the cost to certain businesses. So we need um, some business expertise there. The other one, I hate to use the word, but we need some political smarts um, on the group, uh, in the group, because facts alone are not necessarily persuasive. There are interactions that are very complex between the, uh, the various bodies and some expertise to help manage that, I think would be a, a big plus for the board. Great, thank you, Larry. Um, Susan Neville had a comment. I agree with Councilmember Goodman regarding the ambassador program. Uh, Christy says, like the notion of environmental ambassadors. Thank you, Councilmember Goodman. It takes us all to impact positive change. It would be great with direction guidelines to be able to support Issaquah and the values our community holds. Uh, next is uh, committed Steve. Comment? Hi. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to hear me better this time. We'll try to be more enunciating. Uh, so, an example of uh, involvement for the average example is uh, salmon habitat and habit and, and habit feeding and salmon being over beach, uh, the local habitats. One of the things I think of an example of that would be how close we build communities to the waterways. The also other one I think of is uh, as we change and go from lower than uh, from the ratio of previous to impervious services is the natural filtration that happens that we lose when we go to an increased area of impervious surfaces and how that filtration will happen and affect possibly the salmon varying streams as less natural filtration happens and we just start groundwater directly back into the streams from storage tanks. I'd like to see that expertise captured and encumbered by this body. What is one that takes? Great. Thank you, Steve. Uh, comment from uh, or question from Emma Bai. Yeah, hi. Can you guys hear me? Yes, can hear you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I'm another member from the environmental group at Issaquah High School, and I was just wondering how um, the board plan if the board would be willing to increase their role with the Issaquah School District in increasing um, environmental education. Uh, again, uh, certainly, I think you've heard from a number of the speakers tonight the the importance about uh, you know having a community presence and certainly working with the school district as part of that. Uh, we have had uh, programs, and maybe Megan can speak just briefly to the uh, uh, programs that we have had working with the uh, students at Isqua High School over the years. Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, yes, I, we in the city, we've worked really closely with um, a lot of the green teams around um, a few programs, one of them being the Waste Free Wednesday programs that a lot of the 
students um, uh, participate in, and there's a, a competition in the whole Issaquah School District to see who can have the least amount of waste on a particular day. And each of the schools do it a little bit different, um, and some of them do it always, some of them do it on the measurement day, but that's been a really fun program that the city has helped support um, actually through some grant resources and then staff capacity as well. Um, and we've also done some work um, with a couple of the schools around a program called School Pool. Um, so trying to get uh, kids to, to go to school together or either by walking together, biking together or carpooling in order to reduce um, you know, all the car trips. But I agree that I think um, you know, the city is really interested in the work of the school district and has great relationships so we can continue to build on. Great, did that answer your question, Emma? Yeah, thank you guys so much. Great. Uh, next question is from Mason. Um, well, actually, Mason had a comment uh, on types of topics. Another supporter of climate change discussion awareness specific to Issaquah flooding, wildfire, and salmon conservation. So that's the last of the, of the the questions or comments in the chat box. So let's move to the last question if we can, which is hey, what was Wally? It? This is yeah. Connie. I still can't get in a chat box. I'm on a okay. Mac. Maybe that's a difference. So can I can I speak for a minute? Of course. Okay, thank you. So I keep listening and I hear this sort of a vertical and horizontal. We have a vertical in that we have climate change going down to waste, right? And our our horizontal is we want coverage in the city that will um, cover parks, public works, engineering, private development, and general city planning all the way across. And this is, this is a huge thing. And I don't know that it's possible for one committee to do all of these things. So when I look at the breadth and the height I'm wondering if some of the other committees could not do some of the things that this committee is looking at. For example, uh, planning policy commission is supposed to be doing policy. So could they not pick up a, a topic that is big and overarching? And um, could development commission not pick up an environmental edge of project review. Now there is no particular review for parks or public works engineering, but when I listen to what everybody wants, it's just so big and public outreach, right? You add that in and it's like, oh my gosh, you're swimming. So I'm a little bit overwhelmed by the wants and desires and I'm really happy because we've needed this forever and ever and ever. Now we just need to parse it down into something that can actually exist effectively. Thank you. Thanks, Connie. Uh, Jen S has a comment or suggestion. Hi, Jen Throwett, sorry. Um, suggestion, this is a, a great forum and, and, and a helpful discussion. However, if you're looking for greater feedback, I would consider doing a a survey, like just use a simple Google form um, that can be shared out to the community, stuff that I could post on Nextdoor, et cetera. Um, and in it, I would explain, you know, here's, here's the idea, here's the expertise we have, here's the expertise we think we might need, um, et cetera, you know, and help, help start to fill in those, those gaps that I was talking about before. So just a suggestion on um, logistics or whatever. Great. Thank Thanks. you very much. Any other comments or questions? The last, the last question we haven't heard, uh, I don't think anyone has taken on, which is what would success look like after a year of this board was in place? Anybody want to speak to that? Lara MacBook Air. Hi, um, so I am a graduate student for landscape architecture and I actually did some work this year um, in Arizona. Um, and they had a bunch of scientists who were doing research and it was really interesting to see how they collaborated with um, the city and what they did a little bit differently is they worked on, um, in their case, it was heat 
planning. So planning for that the city was going to get warmer and how do you mitigate the effects of it? Um, but their approach was interesting and I can elaborate another time, but um, I think for a long term, just because there's so many priorities that everyone's discussing that they actually worked with the researchers. So it'd be something like UW in this case um, to do research at the same time as you're developing the policy or working on the priorities. So instead of the researchers going off, what's more traditional is they go off and then they come back with a report. It was to work with city administrators at the same time um, so that you can tweak the, the research that you're looking at. Um, and so it's do it taking smaller chunks of information and doing it more collaboratively. And they found that it was much easier to take the priorities and implement them faster. So Great. I think that would be neat to see that, you know, some sort of manageable prioritization instead of just, you know, trying to bite off this massive chunk all at once. Great, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, it's me again, Wally Connie. Hi, Connie. Hey, long time no see. So, yeah. um, one, it would be awesome to have a culture shift within the staff and the code of the city so that it would actually not require very much oversight of a committee like this in order to ensure that our environment is being protected. And then we could create um, doable goals and public outreach to engage the larger, larger citizenry in helping us achieve some of the soon to be determined um, overarching climate change goals, because I think we need um, something to aim for. We need some actual measurements. So we have to create some measurements and then we can engage the community in trying to get to those things. And so those would be my uh, top two successes. We aren't gonna solve worldwide climate change, but we need to be able to decide when we are being successful and how we can do more once we achieve certain goals. Thanks. Thanks, Connie. We have a comment from Zach, uh, good name, Zabaliski. Uh, interested in seeing native plant rest restoration and incentivizing businesses and homeowners to utilize native plants and landscaping in order to provide habitat and potentially reduce erosion issues. Thank you, Zach. Any final comments or questions? Committed Steve has a comment. Steve, we can't hear you. Okay, how about now? Well, you're great, you're, you're, you're great, go ahead. Okay, so two thoughts. Uh, the first is I agree city code, I don't, I would like to see city code measuring success by changes to city code that prioritize the aspirational language that we often use that doesn't get reflected when we look at code because code isn't aspirational. Uh, so I would look at that because I think city staff is maybe just a reflection of city government is what city will allow or permit or possibly to happen. We can't enforce aspirational statements because we only enforce what the code states. Uh, the second is uh, I'd like I like the idea of an ambassadorship that gets mentioned whether or not there's some type of code or way not code but a way of measuring that that happens or takes place. Uh, I guess the third is uh, I know that city council is currently looking at uh, a way of measuring the success of the development service Skills commission. I'd like to see if there's a way of measuring success of how well we champion or, or oppose or advocate for environmental policies that study 
and time and time again have shown have been very important to physical algorithm. So I'd like to see that captured somehow, a measurement of how well we're championing or advocating or implementing environmental policies. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Talia has a comment. Okay. Um, I would like to say that I think it's very important to increase the bandwidth of representation in our community because I was very surprised to see how limited the expertise was. It was like geology and like some other ones. And especially when we're increasing the bandwidth to what we're focusing on beyond river and streams, I think it's really important to involve more people, A, to be able to um, increase the amount of actual tangible things we're able to get done as well as involve more people that also know other valuable things great thank you uh larry franks has uh success after one year larry do you want to read through them really fast do you want me to um i'll bust through them real fast because it really builds on what talia was uh, saying as well so um in terms of measures of success, I think we need to um, define those early on as the uh, the board is defined. And one of the first items is public understanding and support of, I'm calling it the IEB, the Issaquah Environmental Board and its mission. Um, acceptance of its recommendations by the mayor, the city council, planning commission, et cetera. And then definition of measures of success. So I've just thrown out some um, that could be um, uh, quantitative measures of getting things done. So the percent of area of the city of Issaquah that's preserved in a natural state could be one of the goals. Um, amount of light pollution. So light pollution is a big problem for our Salmonids, for instance. Um, Issaquah Creek and other surface water flooding impact. I think we've had 400 year floods in the last 20 years. Um, contribution to the carbon generated or sequestered, um, and um, there need to be more, but getting down to very specific measures to know if your efforts are successful. Great. Thank you very much, Larry. Uh, a couple of comments to uh, after that from David, ambassadors sooner than later from Lara uh, saying a yes to light pollution, um, I guess the measurement of light pollution. Uh, and then Kaya Hartman uh, regarding noise pollution. So we're at 7.58. Um, we have no more pending questions in the chat box. Let me go back to Megan. Uh, Megan, what are our planned next steps for uh, this convening talking about uh, um, uh, the, uh, the next steps for the, for the new board? Yes, sorry, just finding the unmute button there. <laughs> um, this is a really great conversation. Um, thank you so much. I was hopefully able to capture a lot of that in the notes and we'll have it recorded so can reference back later. Um, but we do have some next steps. So um, this week and the next day or two, I'll be sending out a survey um, to everyone who RSVP'd, whether or not they're on this call. Um, with a few questions um, just in case you have further thoughts or didn't have a chance to add anything today. Um, also, we'll include that in the Isquat Insider going out on Friday to open it up to a wider audience as well so we can get feedback from as many people as possible. Um, and then over the next two weeks, um, we'll take that information, the information that we heard, and, and try to package that up a little bit um, and share that back um, along with a, a version of a proposal of our thoughts about this um, and share that back on June 30th for a second community um, brainstorming here, uh, which will be an hour earlier, 537, trying to accommodate different schedules and try to get um, as many people involved as possible. Um, and then following that, uh, as Wally mentioned in the beginning, we'll be um, having a, a city council study session to talk about this topic more um, and then to start to form the board. So those are the next steps. Um, I also, we did hear a lot about um, of interest in climate today, and I wanted to share with the group that um, we are gonna be having a community convening on climate coming up in July. We've been working with a few local organizations. I see many of them on the phone today. Um, 
So we're working to um, bring the community together uh, to talk about um, a course of action for addressing climate in the city and are looking to uh, for recommendations from um, people who are interested in that. So we'll be sending out more information for that soon, but I just wanted to have this as a, a little save the date for this two-part webinar series that we'll be having on July 20th and 30th. Great. Thank you, Megan. Uh, and thank all of you for uh, joining us this evening. An excellent, excellent conversation. Uh, really appreciate everyone taking the time. Uh, we'll follow up as we've indicated. I think we had about 52 people on the call uh, at the at its uh, height. So uh, a lot of community interest. Uh, we're, we're absolutely committed, uh, Mayor Pauly and the City Council, to figure this out and figure out a way to move forward with a, a viable uh, board that has teeth. Uh, as, as many of you have said tonight. So again, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your time and we'll see you uh, on June 30th. Take care. So Megan. Yes, this is Mary Lynch. I've been trying to get in and haven't been recognized. Could I please be, have a few minutes or a minute? Uh, sure. One of the measures of success or a couple of them I would like to see in a year's time is we have a detailed section 18 rewritten that really includes a lot of what the city is looking to do because uh, we've been asking for that and now because of the uh, virus and the lack of funds that's been postponed again yet we still have development going on and I would like to see a very detailed um, you know, complete section 18 written and then have that um, also train the city staff across the board, public works, public engineering, parks and rec and development staff trained to understand that so that when we have businesses coming in or we have a public works project going or we're going to have a new park, that those codes are followed and the intent of our community what we want to be are followed so that we as citizens don't have to be watchdogs and don't feel frustrated when a development gets to the development commission that a lot of those things have been wiped out and are given away in um you know a mitigation and we ought to be bringing businesses and encourage our businesses and our residents to support what we stand for versus having to fight for it all the time and spend so much energy fighting versus going out and doing the good thing. That's my comment. That would be successful to reduce the amount of time I have to fight to try and get environmental standards maintained. Thank you, Mary. Sorry, sorry you were unable to get our attention earlier, but thank you for your comments. All right, with that, we'll say good night. Take care, everyone. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.